Um, the uh, diagram, we 
we calculate the ground angle out of the Johnson formula, and we have a continuous back growth right after the first 100 cycles. Um, and these are two specimens but with the same stress scenario, uh, but a totally different lifetime. So see the one specimen, specimen one is rising earlier than the other one. Uh, we have a good signal to noise ratio, so um, the noise is around 10 micrometer of the crack length. Um, so we can have a crack length calculation over um, 50 micrometer. But just keep in mind, um, it's an integral method, so uh, we can't say something about the position and geometry of the initial cracks. We have plotted a different stress scenario, so 60, 70, and 80 megapascal, sometimes written with set and overload in front, and for 70 megapascal also with a laser group. Here the N is the uh, amount of the samples. And what we can see is first, if we have a high load, uh, we have a lower life. Okay, if we have a high load, we have a smaller deviation. Okay, but now that we have one signal overload, right in the beginning, it also reduces significantly the lifetime. And if we have a laser cut, so if we have a pre damage on the group, on the notch, it also shrinks the lifetime. But now, how can we correlate this with the, site, uh, with the fracture surface? So we have different analyses. Um, first, we look inside of the notch of the broken root, uh, inside of the broken notch, uh, and see the crack growth right inside of the notch. On the other hand, we can look at the fracture surface. And this is a false kind of picture, so a three-dimensional picture. Um, the notch is right on the bottom, and the crack propagation direction is in the direction of the arrow. And what we can see here now is we have a so-called step. We see it on both pictures, and the step has a certain length and, of course, a certain height. And later I will take talk about the point of coalescence. This is just the point uh, after the step, at the end of the step, when the initial cracks grow together. Um, and we can combine this with the position and amount of the initial cracks, which can be seen under the electron microscope. And in this case, we only have uh, two initial cracks right at the edges of the specimen. In comparison to another sample um, specimen, we see here uh, also the two pictures and three steps with a certain length and a certain height. But if you have a look at the, this step right at the right side, it's very smooth in the beginning. Um, so there's the question, how big is really the influence on the cyclic life? And on the other side, it's near the edge. So um, there's also not this effect in a step in the middle of the specimen. Ah, okay, sorry. And here we have uh, four initial cracks. Um, also, so we see here we have a step always between two initial cracks. Not always, but in this case we have. So, to compare the two specimens, um, the one on the left side has a higher cyclic life, oops, higher cyclic lifetime than the other one. And we saw, see also the length and the height of the step, which is for specimen one larger than for specimen two. The amount for, of the initial cracks um, is shown here, and also the point of coalescence, as I said, this is the point after the step when the two initial cracks are growing together. So the higher the length, uh, height of the and length of the step is directly correlated. So it doesn't matter if we look at the length or the height of the step. Um, the higher or longer the step is, the higher is the lifetime. And the amount of the initial cracks reduces the lifetime. 
as well as said, if there are several initial cracks, they see each other the crack open, and the crack propagation is accelerated. And a small step affects the fast coagulation in percent of the cycle time. So here are plotted the length of the step over the cycle lifetime. Um, for the three stress scenario of 70 megapascal, with and without an overload and laser cuts. And we see there's a linear alignment possible for all three groups. And for all groups, there are specimens uh, over all the cycle lifetime without any step. So there's something more than just this. And sometimes there are exceptions uh, which can be explained uh, by looking at the fracture surface. Uh, in this case, we clearly have an initial crack on, at the edges, and one initial crack is dominating the other one. So the effect of this step is not really large. Um, we can do the same for the stress scenarios of 60 and 80 megapascal. So uh, 60 megapascal with and without overload and the same for 80. Um, also here we have specimens of all cyclic lifetimes without any step. But for the uh, cyclic loads without any overload, we see also the linear alignment. But not, in this case, not for the specimens with the overload. But finally, we can say uh, the step has a significant influence on the cyclic lifetime, and mostly a linear alignment is possible. Um, the next uh, analysis is um, that we look at the contour line, so out of this three dimensional picture, we can extract a contour line right in, in the near of the notch and plot the height over the width. You can do it for the whole group of the, of the same stress scenario and see the higher the step is, the longer is the cyclic lifetime. So there's a clear influence, but not for all specimen. So here we have specimen 4 with the highest cyclic lifetime, but no stop step at all. But what we can see, it's rougher. The surface is more rougher than the other one. So there's, it's not the fully true. So a short summary. Um, so we can say we have a certain load scenario and we have a microstructure. That causes um, the amount and, posi and position of initial cracks. Out of these initial cracks, we get a step with a certain height and length, which has an influence on the short crack propagation. And we've got there's a origin of the um, scatter of the cyclic light. As a short outlook, um, sure we still need uh, lifetime cal uh, statistic uh, statistical methods for lifetime calculations. Um, but maybe in future we can get some more information about the um, calculations of stress integral uh, just to calculate uh, where there is the possibility of initial cracks. Thanks for your attention and keep your questions.